Hello, welcome to Quack Talk. I'm Crystal here on Think Tech Hawaii this Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock. So question, what do you usually wear to the beach? I know, Hawaii, everybody wears whatever they want. Usually the skimpier the better. And it's a healthy thing though, because we're all so rooted into our nakedness and, and, and earthiness. So it's not an issue. But what about in other parts of the world? Now recently, um, there's been a huge controversial issue about what people should be wearing and what's being banned and what uh, women should not be wearing or should cover up wearing. I think you know where I'm going with this. We're talking about burkinis. I'm going to talk about the issues raised because of the ban in France and why and how we see ourselves and what we should have the rights to wear on the beach as females and males. So speaking of male, guess who I picked up off the street today to join in this conversation this morning? Just for a little bit, we've got our wonderful Jay here. Thank you, Jay. You know, Hi, Jay's Crystal. like, what am I doing here talking about burkinis? What the heck is a burkini? <laughs> right. Have you heard what that term is? I've heard the term, but I need you to define it for me. Okay. So a burkini is technically a, a, well, it's a newly coined term. It's not a technical term at all. Uh, between the burqa, which is the Muslim's uh, veil, the covers the whole body, mm -hmm. and a bikini. And um, in light of the terrorist attack in France over the summer, uh -huh. um, they, France had in, imposed a ban on the burkinis, basically women who were dressed covered up on the beach. So it became an illegal thing to wear, to be covered up on the beach in France because they celebrate the body, obviously. So it's not a bikini, it's, it's a burqa. Yeah, it's not even a It's bikini. an ordinary burqa. No, I'll it's, show you a picture. Okay, okay so, okay. well, this is the picture of the actual, uh, you know, case where these police came in and asked this poor lady who was just resting there by herself, innocently, to take off her outer garment. Take off her outer, but none of the other people on the beach are taking off. Well, I mean, they have, have nothing have to take off. Garments. So she has to take off her outer garment in order to be on the beach. Yeah. They, this would be okay on the street. Yes. So That's they're strange. thinking, do you think it's strange? I think it's strange. I mean, what's the difference on the street, on the beach? Well, they're Wear exactly. an overcoat if you want, you know. Right. You no, know, bring up these issues. This is why it's so important to have even a man's perspective on this. Because for us women, there's a huge uproar. But, but, but what, what, what is it with the French? What is it with the French? <laughs> what, okay, yeah. the, are they saying they want women to wear skimpy clothes on the beach? Yeah, they're celebrating the body. No, well, it's... You know, I'm with them on that. <laughs> I like skimpy clothes. <laughs> okay, I figured that. The, the less, the better. Less is more. Yeah. But think about it. Um, their reason is because, especially in light of the... Uh, recent terrorist attack, they felt that um, s by wearing a burqa or anything associated with the Muslim uh, religion, yeah. they felt it was actually kind of a provoking and, and, and non-respect for, pe for people who were grieving uh, victims yeah. of the attack that was happening at that same beach. At, at the beach. Yes. But not the on the street. Just no. the beach. Right. It's really hard to put that together. Uh, well, that's why it's so crazy. Yeah. But... You know, I think it's worth looking at the motivation. All right. Okay. So from a it's not as simple as just obviously. you know beating up people at the beach. I think uh, they feel that the that that the burqa is a statement. Yes. And it's a statement, perhaps sometimes that's threatening, and intentionally so. I mean, they've concluded that it's a statement that is intentionally threatening. So, do you think it's, these women thought they were intentionally threatening by just the being beach. there with their right? The, the whole beach. Like cotton, but the, you know, the beach distinction doesn't seem rational to me. Right, that's a little extreme. There's another photo we have of, uh, of, of a couple of ladies on the beach where the, there's a lady uh, in her normal wear because it's just her culture to cover up her body yeah. next to all the normal bathers. Yeah. Now, why is that uh, she, offensive is, to is, people? Is that against the law in France? Yes, in fact. Why, why is she there then? She's allowed to this swim. She the likes the water. Came. Yes, this is a different lady. But there have been a, a, many cases where the police will go on after the ban, and they will find them. I think it was 38 euros for uh, wearing a burqa on the beach. 38, 38 euros, is euros. 45 bucks or something. That's not cheap, that's, right? That's, that's not cheap. And so this picture that you've just shown us is yes. the picture just before the other picture with the police coming around. No, it's a different her. lady. No, but theoretically, yes. the police are about to arrive. You know, at the beach oh, yes. that and arrest picture, that woman or these, charge her 38, 38 yes, euros for what she's doing. These cops would be standing on the beach waiting for her to get out of the water. I don't Everyone understand. Everyone would be watching. I must say I don't understand. I can understand, you know, their, their concern about 
people making a sort of an anti-French statement yeah. by wearing burkas in certain situations. Right. But the beach, is the, is the French beach different from any other beach? Exactly. Why is the beach different than a street? And do you know that in France, they actually banned the burqa in the city, in the streets, since 2004. Yeah, but, so that, it's but they changed their minds about that. Yes, yeah. because of all the noise. Yeah. So there's, there's a, you know, a tension on this point, and yes. it isn't going to go away. Yes. And I think you know, part of it, although it's a little misguided, uh, part of it is that the burqa you know, uh, enables you to conceal your identity. Right. And if you are a terrorist, even a man terrorist, and you put a burqa on, you know, nobody knows who you are. Okay, you yes, so that's doing something. more... Yeah. Right. But if you're on the beach, you find that also unnecessary, this ban. Uh, As I, a man, I do you find that... I personally do, but, you know, uh, the, the French beach is a different beach. Let's, let's talk about the French culture. I mean, you may not know this, Crystal, but there are many, many beaches in France where you can see naked Have women. you been to a nude beach? Come on, let's hear it, Jay. And I, what happens what is there's, you... <laughs> a, there's a table, right, that you can always eat in France and drink. On right? the beach? On the beach. Okay. Or just off the beach. And you can you can face at the table, you can face into the water, uh -huh. or you can face, you know, okay. Malka into the mountains, okay. right? Hmm. And my wife is a really sweet person. <laughs> and she allows me to sit at that position on the table where I look into the beach. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> but you nice want to look towards the nude people on the beach. So I, you're, yeah, you're, so you're well, facing towards the so people. So if I'm on the table, uh -huh. I want to I see what's on the beach. Right. And what's on the beach is frequently naked women. And how do you feel about that? Do you feel that that's something that we should... You're all, well, all smiles. Hmm. Uh, I'm all smiles because I think it's charming in its own way. <laughs> no matter what they look like, what age, what shape, what size, it's what up to them. background. You know, for everyone who looks dumpy, there's a lot of them in France that don't look so dumpy. And I'm always trying to make that distinction. <laughs> so that's why you're there. You know, you're educating well, yourself on I'm the body shape. I'm actually there to and... have a, 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 you know, a, a glass of beer and maybe some food sitting at the table. But you're a worldly man. You're well-traveled. What do you think? I mean, because in, in Asia, parts of the world, they don't even wear it because of a religious reason. It's because of the sun. You know, Chinese people hate the well, sun. But, they but will Asian cover themselves. people are modest. They, yes. they don't do immodest things. They would not be naked at the beach. The other extreme, I have a picture, in fact, you know, this is, and, you know, all this noise about the burkinis, but there is a picture of these ladies all lined up, uh, I believe, here. Um, this was taken um, in China. Uh, look at the beautiful, like, ninja-esque costumes. I say costumes, but they're swimsuits for people who don't want to be exposed to the sun. Now, that's a cultural acceptance. It's not even an issue. Yeah, that is cultural, isn't it? They right. don't want to be exposed Which one to the do you sun. like? Which one would you wear? But it wear? also serves... <laughs> <laughs> the, the panda or the tiger? I need to see more. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> but it also serves the, this whole Asian thing about being modest. Right. That's a statement of modesty also. It's kooky. You know. So the question is, when you travel to a place, is it important for a tourist to respect and understand the culture of that place before you know how to dress appropriately on the beach? Yes. I mean, it, it, it goes to being a tourist in general, doesn't it? Yes. You want to know and respect the culture, period. Right. I mean, you, you don't want to be disruptive uh, to the culture. You don't want to be offensive. Right. You don't want to be the ugly American or the ugly anybody. Oh, but that happens all the time It happens anyway. all the time, yeah. but it's not desired. Right. You'd really rather, you know, get, get familiar with what's going on right. and try to be harmonious with it. So going back to the burkini issue is, do you think that the uh, women, if they were Muslim, uh, should be educated enough to know that it's not proper to cover themselves up or to, should they respect their own religious culture to keep it. So where, where do you draw the line? Oh, I think this is a much larger issue, isn't it? It it's is. It's an issue of culture. It's an issue of politics. It's an issue of protest. Extremism. It's bringing out all the terrorism. It's an issue of terrorism, terrorism yes. sometimes. Yes, huge. So, uh, you know, I don't think it comes to the end just by making it illegal to exactly. wear a burqa on the beach. That's, that's just a cosmetic issue. The real issue is how are, um, you know, how are these women and their families getting along with the French government? How is the French government treating them? Yeah. Um, and we have this similar issues in this country, by the way. Okay, let's hear it. Well, I mean, there are people who are offended by seeing a burqa. I don't think there's any place in the, in the country where you could actually en 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 you know, enact a law against it. Yeah. But I think a lot of people don't like it. Yeah, it's too sensitive now. Yeah. But have you seen it on the beaches in Hawaii? I haven't. Have no, I have not. Yeah. I what would not. you do if you did? 
Would, would that uh, be an eyesore to you? Would you be like with that lady? Would you be gawking your... Which one? <laughs> well, you're the big one, right? <laughs> no. How would you feel? Uh, would, I'd feel... Would you feel offended? No, I just feel it was strange. Okay. I feel it's strange for a woman to put all that, to pack all that equipment just to go in the water. Okay, but She's you would respect that. She's got to feel strongly about her culture. And, you know, query, does that, is it really, is she being, you know, sensitive to the culture around her? Right. You know, there's well, another issue there. But she's not trying to insult. Look at this lady. She's just sitting there. I mean, she well, looks like she wants to is. get that's, in the way. Yeah, and there's a modesty there. Yeah, it's I don't think she's religious. even caring about that little red, pretty right. red the, bikini. The one of the red does her thing, and the, the one in the burqa does her thing. Yeah, right. But the French, you know, I'm going to quote this one French uh, mayor from the Riviera. He says, if you don't want to live the way we do, don't come. That's the so, problem in France. Yeah. That, I mean, that's, this is much more than the beach. Right. Uh, you know, there was a the thing about going to the schools, too. The yes. schools didn't want to have kids in burkas, and uh, they would, right. would refuse them entry. Right. And I don't know how that got worked out, but that was uh, the same yeah. kind of issue. Exactly. No? And how do you educate your kids about this? When, you, when your kids go and see people in schools or on the beach, what, what's that conversation? Well, I think in France, you know, the French people are very, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very strong culture. People believe in it. It's, it's a, a nationalistic kind of culture. And so you say to yourself, you know, we care a lot about our culture. We care about everything French. This is not French. So if these people want to be with us in our country, they have to abide by our French culture. They're, they're sticking a finger in our eye by ignoring our French culture and, you know, um, acting out on their culture. So you think that they're right to impose No, I'm family? just saying that's okay. what the French attitude is. Okay. So both, okay. In, in this country, you don't have that, you know, right. because we have so many cultures okay. going on. We are, on this kind of thing, I think, more tolerant. Okay. Well, thank you for your opinion. But before I let you go, Jay, I'm going to have you, you know, we always need to flip the other side of the uh, coin to see how we're all talking about the women on the beach. But let me just give you this image. What do you think about this? If you were on the beach, would you feel offended by that? Because, you, you, you know, you've been to nude beaches and that could be uh, you. <laughs> In fact, that, that is thank you. you. <laughs> that, Crystal. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, what do you think? My, I, I think uh, he's embarrassing himself. Um, oh, so you don't like I, little tea bags, huh? I think there's nothing macho about that. Um, Isn't that there's sexy, nothing huh? aesthetic about it. Right. He looks like uh, maybe the Donald Trump would look. Uh, <laughs> maybe it is. If he him. really had well, a toupee. That is toupee. <laughs> and, and you know, it reminds me of that statue of Donald Trump that they were positioning all around the country. Oh, the naked beach? Donald. Oh, you remember that? oh, no, I don't want to so, see that. I mean, but this is not really uh, complimentary no. to, to walk around like that. And I, I don't okay, think Okay, so that's a man's perspective on a little male. Bur I don't know what you call that, a <laughs> tea bag. But we'll see if you can put one on one day and see how you feel and how people judge you on the beach next time. You may have a long wait. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'll take that chance. Thank you so much for coming, Jay. Thank we're going to take you, a Crystal. quick break and we're going to continue talking about burkinis and whatnot about the body. Thank you. Aloha! How you doing? Welcome to Ibachi Talk. I'm here, Gordo the Tech Star on Think Tech Hawaii. And I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew the Security Guy. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Aloha. Good to, have him, good, to, good to have Andrew here in the house. Please join us every Friday from 1 to 1.30 and follow us up on YouTube. And remember, as we say at the end of every show, how, how you, you doing? doing? Aloha, I'm Kirsten Baumgart-Turner, host of Sustainable Hawaii. We live stream every Tuesday from noon to 12.30. And you get a chance to hear what people are doing about sustainability in Hawaii and what the issues are impacting all of us in all the islands. Join us, please. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Law Across the Sea. Please join me every other Monday to hear lawyers from Hawaii discussing ways to reach across the sea and help people and bring people together. Aloha. Aloha everyone, I'm Maria Mera and I'm here to invite you to my bilingual show Viva Hawaii every other Monday at 3 p.m. Um, we are here to show you news, issues and events local and around the world. Join me. Hey, how you doing? Uh, welcome to Abachi Talk. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm your co-host. And we have a nice program here every Friday at 1 o'clock uh, on Think Tech Studios where we talk about technology and we have a little bit of fun with it. So join us if you can. Thanks. Aloha.
Yeah. So okay, you don't want welcome me to back. Uh, so thank you, Jay, again for coming in for a male perspective on the burkini. And now we're going to welcome our other guest. Uh, she is a advanced certificate uh, major in women's studies, PhD student in sociology at uh, UH. Welcome, Joy. How do you pronounce your last name? I don't want to do it wrong. La Canienta? That's perfect. Oh, yes, thank Joy you. Lacanienta. Thank okay. you for having me. And Joy, I understand you're uh, a community organizer for over 20 years. So 23, you're very, 23, yes. all 23, right. Yes. So you're very, very active in the community. Yes. So how do you feel as a woman um, uh, with ethnic uh, background, mm -hmm. being in Hawaii, uh, about this whole burkini issue? Do you think it's a... What's your position on the ban in France? Let's just start with that. Okay. And, and well, it's all about like the policing of the women's body right. more than anything. Like it, it doesn't have to be the burkini, but it also has a lot to do with just policing the women's body and taking away the women's voice in uh -huh. terms of what she can do with her body. It's right. actually the women's preference and whatever she wears. I mean, if they're going to ban the burkini, they should ban the scarves that the the French women are so famously wearing for. Uh, I mean, does it matter if it's on the head or is it on the neck? Right. But it's it's really more of a statement about the intersection of race. Yes. And the intersection of you know oppressing gender and and also the whole patriarchal issue of imposing dominance and superiority for what we perceive as the other. You know. Right. So see, women's <laughs> studies lingo here. Okay. Uh, we have to bring all that in. Objectification, that's a huge one, yes. too. I mean, yes. do you think that this issue raised that self-objectification other than the fact that they've taken away uh, a woman's voice by just uh, imposing a rule on how she should dress on the beach? Right, yes. I mean, it, it really doesn't matter what a woman wears on the beach. It's her body. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, it's particularly in, if you go to Europe, um, if you go to France and Nice and the beaches over there, it, men wear thongs or right, whatever. Right, just missed yes. the nice sexy, oh, did you see that sexy yes, shot? Yes, I so did, So what do you yes. think of, is that offensive to you? That is more offensive to me than the burkini, right, I have to me say. me too. Yes. That's just like going to ruin my lunch, you know, if I saw that. <laughs> and when you go to Thailand, you get all yes. the dumpy old German guys who go over there for a little, you know, retreat, and they all dress like that. And it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it, It's more um, what is not just appeasing to the eyes, but it's also <laughs> revolting. Yes, thank but you. But they, they don't ask our permission if you want to see that, right? Right. So Exactly. Why is there not a ban on the skimpiness on an ugly male body? Right. I mean, there is kind of like a, a, a law, I mean, especially in the United States, about you know, not being undressed or naked in front of the, you know, public places right. and whatnot. But I think it's just, this is more targeted for a specific group of people, yes. a specific race of folks, yes. and more particularly a specific uh, religion and faith um, right. faith-based beliefs. Yeah. But that's the thing, you know, when we talk about religion, this raises a huge issue and we don't really have time to go so in-depth <laughs> into it, but this is a sensitive issue, but it, they're assuming that all the people who cover their bodies are Muslim, which is not the right. case. In yeah. fact, yeah. Uh, they say, I think 40% of the salespeople, uh, I mean, people who buy the burkinis online or wherever it's accessible, are not Muslim. They are Jewish. A lot of Asians who I spoke to Jay about how right. they just cover it because they don't like the sun. Right. And it, I mean, it's an SPF protection, right? Exactly. If, if you're not happy with the SPF 100, then the best thing to do is put, you know, clothing. I mean, that's a, I mean it's a self-protection. But I think the whole uh, politicization about the the burkini issue is really heightened by you know they relating it to something that it is not, which is terrorism. Right. 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 I mean, w but it's kind of like a misguided and misdirected is it oversimplification of yeah, and, the and issue? fear. It's out of fear, and what are you going to hide under a burkini for crying out loud, right? But right. it's really that that the images that um, the Western society, mm -hmm. um, wants to project to vilify uh, something that is not them. Right. So, I mean, I, if I can quote some folks, you know, yeah, in please. terms of the generalized other that I yeah. mentioned, um, Simone de Beauvoir yes. um, wrote and, and really coined the phrase, women as the other. Right. Right. So, you're just heightening the sense of women being not just objectified, but really, did you even ask their opinion about how they feel about wearing the burkini? It's... Mm, it's nobody else's business but your own self. But where do you draw the line between, you know, because it's such an extremism um, culturally for Muslim women to grow up to 
pr to cover themselves in right. the public. I mean, how right. much do you respect that, and, and where does it go be to an offensive side where people should step in and say, well, come on, this is really affecting how uh, my children are going to view what is uh, appropriate and not appropriate. Yeah, that's why it's, it's really hard to separate these intersecting issues yeah. about how people grow up in the culture, in the belief system. For example, the the Muslim religion really believes in covering up the body. Right. And Laila Bulagod, um, an author at Harvard, wrote this beautiful book about do Muslim women need saving, you know, in terms of the in the covering of the head mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Is it is it really bad for them? Or Are they really, really unhappy? Is, is, is it an oppressed thing? thing? Right. But not all Muslim women have to wear the covering on the head. It's a choice. And I think that's what's being taken away. The right, the right of a woman to to voice out what they want to wear. Yeah. You know, it's it's your choice, it's your right. body. And that you're being vilified in terms of images in the media. You yeah. Know. Well that's I mean there are so many angles we can take this, but to go back onto the beach mm -hmm. where this this whole controversy is arising because you know I agree with you. There's all that you need to take into consideration. On the beach specifically, are we should they ban this? I mean, um, there is a quote, there's somebody who said that that swimsuit becomes you. Mm. Which is interesting because culturally, uh, or just for gender reasons, mm -hmm. or who you are as an identity, mm. how you choose that bikini or not bikini or burkini, does that reflect who you are inside? I think it's more of a commercial plot to, <laughs> to <laughs> promote right. certain bikinis because we were not born with bikinis in mind. What do you wear to the beach? Right. Well, I, I wear, wear my local, I'm, I'm a local girl, so I, exactly. I wear the, the shorts and, you know, sometimes a tank top and all that stuff. So tell and, me, you know. is local girl, you, when we say that, do you think that locals are more reserved about the bodies on the beach? No, I mean, I think it's very different from one local girl to another okay. local person, you know, it's just, or a local man to not. I've seen some local boys who just wear shorts or whatever, right. and some wear jeans to the beach, whatever they feel or whatever they have. Yeah. It's not so much of a, an issue... It's I not, think for, for, for us here, particularly in Hawaii, who, who live in an island lifestyle, right. right? It's far more relaxed. That's why it's such a departure. But I have seen a lot of my friends from Japan come yeah. here, and they wear those suits, right. you Just know. Just to protect from the sun. It's yeah. not because they don't want to be exposed. And those shark, I mean, the, the shark skin type of the long sleeve yeah, things that yeah. they wear. It's like a rash guard right, yeah, that they wear yeah. for surfing. Right. It's because they keep going back and forth from the surfboard. Yeah, so but it's if whatever somebody, see, So you're talking about something normal because of the sun and protection of the skin, but like a lady like that who is obviously wearing it for religious reasons, covering her head with a scarf, mm -hmm. that is deemed offensive to some people. And it's just And I think we have crazy. to ask why. Yeah. Why is it offensive? Why is it, yes, why yeah. is it associated to extremism and terrorism just right. because, I mean, this is how simplified we're, right. we're turning into. It's, it's really scary. Right. Why, why is it scary? We, I yeah. think we have to keep um, looking at the fact that it's, um, it's an issue but that's being politicized that yes. it's not supposed to be politicized. It's a women's choice. We have to keep asking the important questions asking the important critical thinking type of questions of instead of putting the focus on the woman that's wearing the particular clothing that they deemed offensive we have to ask ourselves why do you feel like it's offensive why is it scaring you right. why are you so afraid of a woman wearing right. whatever she wants to on the beach because she has a certain belief system yes you know so those and to educate things. yourself in understanding the different belief systems all over the world right. because you know in asia it's quite funny because um, in Nepal, for example, mm -hmm. they're quite reserved too, but in, there was a recent case where there were a bunch of American tourists who went up there to a very religious site and took their clothes off to take selfies in front of it, and people were horrified. Mm -hmm. It's so disrespectful. Why do you not understand the culture and respect it? Right, right. Which is so, the other extreme, right, taking off. Right, so, and, and also this belief that um, the Western society is the baseline of what we should follow. That's a good point. You know, so, I mean, we don't live in a silo. We don't live in, in a position where it's just us. I mean, for lack of a better term, we don't live in an island, so to speak. I mean, we par we're part of a global society. We should be. Right? <laughs> and, and that we need to really 
pay attention to other people's belief system and just you don't have to agree with it but you don't have to disrespect it like what you said well how important do you think it is for parents to educate their kids and how do you do that because last night I was looking through all these bikini bikini issues I was had it on my computer and my 10 year old son came over and goes oh what do you do and I said you know in France you're not allowed to wear that and he says what he thought it was the most ridiculous thing because he didn't know the context of right. linking it to the terrorists uh, but even as an innocent kid who just sees that they don't see that it's where like imposing these judgments on these kids right it's really an imposition like what you said and it's it's kind of like imposing your value mm. system on other people right you know and saying that I'm right you're wrong right. so it's very petty at the heart of it it's a petty belief system yeah is know. that I mean something something simple like this is always is a very common sight in in the European beach yes with a Muslim woman doing her thing and everyone else in their little bikinis and where's the harm in that <laughs> yeah, I, I exactly. don't see any harm in that. And then the poor woman gets fined for for doing that kind for of being thing. herself, for being herself, for for believing in herself. And I think that the more attention that we put into the matter, the more we talk about it in in these type of mediums, the more we inform people about how ridiculous this issue is, yes. you know. <laughs> so is it ridiculous for us to talk about it? No, I think it's important, it's critical for us to discuss it so that people can make an informed yes. decision because if you don't talk about it, you accept the law or whatever right. as truth and we don't even know why. Yeah. So a, a healthy discourse about yes. questioning this, uh, questioning certain laws or rules that, that is really infringing on the rights. What is oh. one suggestion you would uh, give out to people who are listening to our show right now uh, in terms of opening their uh, perspective on, on how we women perceive our bodies? Women have a right to our bodies. Basically, that's the main point. We have a right to, to make sure that we have a say in what we do and what we wear and how to express ourselves, you know. Um, it's and it also it is our obligation to challenge these notions of um, oppressive thinking, right. you know, and and also to challenge ignorance yes. because basically um, the bottom line is this law, these fines towards these women are are gender based. It's it's really. Um, targeted for women of a certain right, culture, right. of a certain belief system, yes. and because only women are being targeted, there's there's a basic human rights issue that we're Absolutely. overlaying. Well, yeah. there you go. We'll send it with that. Human's rights, basic things, you know. So again, empower yourselves with perspective. Um, ignorance is not bliss. Knowledge is power. So like Smart Joy here, always furthering her studies, do the same for yourselves and just make your own judgments and don't be judged or let things judge you okay all right thank you for tuning in and i hope you uh, enjoy the beach thank you for having you joy for coming thank and sharing you. your perspective thank you for having me bye, -bye.